So we're going to start by going over last night's homework, and then we're going to finish up the review sheet for chapter two. So I have to get out your old chapter two review sheets, and that's because tomorrow is just a chapter two test. So that means anything that was on the original chapter two, which wasn't much, it was the latitude and longitude stuff, and then hydrosphere, atmosphere, lithosphere stuff, which was here on the bottom of your reference table. So your same chapter two review sheet, which I want to actually kind of review a little bit right now to make sure you have everything you need on there. Uh, we're gonna start with remember latitude. Yeah, go ahead, take one. Latitude, zero is the equator. 90 north is the North Pole, 90 south is the South Pole. Longitude, zero degrees is the prime meridian, and 180 is the international date line. Remember that latitude lines go horizontal, so you can see again what they look like. They measure north and south of the equator. Do you have, you might not have these exact ones in the exact same order, just make sure you have all of this information on your review sheet. Longitude line, they go vertical, but remember they're not parallel, they do touch at the poles. So if you were to look at the longitude lines, they do kind of curve and touch at the poles. They measure east and west of the prime meridian. With latitude, you must remember that altitude of Polaris equals your latitude. So that's how far Polaris is above the horizon. If you have room, you might want to write that this is the horizon. And then Polaris, we want this angle. This is the alt. That's the altitude of Polaris. So as long as you know the altitude of Polaris, let me get that one, zoom in there for, for you. Maybe they'll see better. So the altitude of Polaris is always equal to your latitude. Do you have this from last chapter? You should. What'd you do with it? All right, if you can't find it, I have spares. Longitude. Remember that the same longitude, longitude, P-U-D-E, -E, equals the same time. So if you're on the same longitude, you're the same time. And that actually goes along with the time zones. You must know that they are 15 degrees apart. And then again, if you go west, it gets earlier in the day. If you go east, it gets later in the day. The shape of the earth, this one is definitely important to remember. It's an oblate spheroid, which means it's slightly fatter. And I think I spelled fatter wrong. Is there two T's in fatter? Or is fatter not even a word? Two T's in fatter. That wasn't some weird earth science word. It just means fat. Um, and then the one that I'm not sure you guys had here in second period, did we remember to remind you what hydrosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere are? I think we forgot that on their original review sheet. So hydrosphere is water. Lithosphere is rocks, atmosphere is air. So that was the review from the original first test. If you're looking for ways to get ready for the test tomorrow, one thing you might wanna do is look over the last test we took. So the last test looked like this one. Guys, I can only ask the question so many different ways. So it might be helpful just to review that test to see what were the things that were that were on that test that came up over and over again. Odds are they're gonna show up on this test. Let me rephrase that. They will show up on this test. I did not include anything on this review sheet that you don't need to know. So that review sheet, everything is still fair game. And then the only other thing I want to remind you of is this reference table here. So just remember that this is here. It just tells you the elements that are in the crust, the hydrosphere and the troposphere. And I believe on your reference table, what's the crust made out of? Like the general concept of the crust? 
Rocks, remember that please, rocks. What's the hydrosphere made out of? Wait, I couldn't hear you. Water. And what's the troposphere? This is part of the atmosphere here. So this is made out of air. So that's really important that you remember that. That's chapter two, part one. Now chapter two, part two is what we've been working on these past few weeks in our packet. It's the connect the dots for slightly older kids. So you had homework on this stuff yesterday. And so we're gonna kind of do what we've done in the past where we go over homework and pull out the important things you need to know um, and put those in our reference table. So before we even start, I know the first thing that you're going to have to remember is the definition of ISO lines. What's an ISO line? Let me start you off. Lines. That connect points of equal value. So you need to be able to draw these. That's the first thing. And we didn't do any of those in the homework last night. So that's why I'm gonna tell you, you need to be able to draw them. Actually, let's do a box for them. Oh, did I need to go back? That were people still writing? When you draw them, there's a few rules. What should we remember when we draw ISO lines? They never touch. Can you think of another rule? They are parallel ish. Yeah, parallel trends. P A R P A R E P A R what? Thank you. I know I should know how to spell that. Parallel. I still spell it wrong. Can you guys just spell it right? Is that better? <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is why I use PowerPoint. Um, any more rules? Okay, so they separate. Numbers that are bigger and numbers that are smaller. That's a good one. Those aren't quite all the rules. Also remember they are with smooth, gentle curves instead of sharp angular corners. But to be honest, I'm not gonna mark you wrong for that unless, as long as the lines are where they belong, I won't mark you wrong. I think those are good enough for the rules of drawing ISO lines. So now that we remember how to draw them, oh, and again, maybe we should add connect equal values, which I know we just wrote on the front, but that's how important it is that you understand that. Let's switch over to the homework. What did you get for a contour interval on this map? So what, first of all, what is a contour interval? Actually, first, what is a contour map? Sorry. Also, does anybody remember what they're also known as? AKA, you guys know AKA, also known as? Topographic maps. And I heard somebody say that these are maps that show elevation.
And then what's a contour interval? What the lines go up by? There are only two units of measurement used for contour interval on the maps that we will look at. What are they? Feet, which is abbreviated FT, or meters, which is abbreviated with the lowercase m. So what was the contour interval on this one? I think I heard you guys say it, 50. This one was super easy. The, uh, by the way, are these feet or meters? Feet. How did you know they were feet? It didn't tell you anywhere. Because if it's miles, then it's feet. Um, this one was super easy because they were labeled. They will never all be labeled again. So just make sure that you can figure out, oh, if zero's here and 300's here, Trial and error, try 10s, try 20s, try 30. No, don't try 30s, it'll never be 30s. Try 10s, 20s, maybe 25s, then 50. So just anything that's easy to count by. All right, so which, towards which direction does uh, Lost Creek flow? Good, so how, how did you know which way the streams flow? Okay, there's two different ways, streams, Blow downhill. So you can um, look at the map and you can tell which way is downhill by looking at the elevation. And then the other way, which you do have to be able to see on the maps as well. And that's the way the contour lines bend. Every time the contour lines touch the river or the creek or a stream, they bend. It's the only place where they're all bending. They bend because of erosion, but that's not important for this chapter. The important part is they bend. And every time they bend, what do we know about the bends? Bends point to where the stream came from. Or another way of thinking about it is the water comes out of the bend. Sorry, I had to squeeze that one there. So bends point to where the stream came from, or you can think of it as the water comes out of the bend. Every single time there's a stream, the, the lines will bend and they point to where it came from and the water comes out of the bed. And then it just asks you to draw a profile between the lines A and B. Oh wait, it looks like you guys are still writing. Okay, here's what your profile should have looked like. So we start from A at zero. Your last two dots should have been at the 300. And then you should have curved that line up over the 300. Then it goes down and then you had two dots at the 150. At that point, which is right here, here's the 150 dots right here and here. Where those two dots are, if I was to put an X somewhere in between them, they're between this line, which is the 150 line, and this line, which is the 100 line. So that is a dip down, that's like a valley. Then again, we go up to 200, two dots, curve it up and back down. Um, so what do we need to know on your, um, so how to draw a profile.
First of all, I'm just going to refer you back to all of the directions on your, this is page 30 in your packet for all the directions. There are multiple profiles on the test tomorrow. However, I changed most of them into multiple choice questions. So how will you, if I gave you one of these and asked you to answer this in a multiple choice, <laughs> what it's going to be is there's going to be, do I give an example? I did kind of give an example of this later on. Basically, there'll be four different profiles in the answers. And you'll have to check to see which one would be drawn correctly. So just make sure you're very comfortable looking at the profiles for tomorrow. All right, and then for gradient. First of all, let's just start off with what is gradient? What is it? Not the equation, what is it? Slope. And really what it means is how fast does the elevation change? Remember it is on the front cover, ESRT page one. Change in field value divided by distance. How do we find the change in field value? For example, how did we find the change in field value from C to D on this map? Subtracting. I'm going to add a label that says subtract two points. How do we find the distance? Hopefully you really do remember and you're just too shy to answer. How do we find distance on this map? Map scale. So when we did C to D on your homework, C was 50, D was 200. So when you subtract 200 minus 50, you got 150. On the map scale, I said that they were six miles apart, which gives me 25 feet per mile. How did you guys do on that? Excellent. Saw so some nodding of the heads. Another uh, helpful reminder, make sure you always use the proper units. Um, all right, on the back. Oh, how do we tell for the next one? How do we tell the steepest side of the map? Steepest section, yeah. Lines close together. So where were the lines closest together on page 43, number one? How do we answer that? Northeast. What is the contour interval? This one gave people a lot of hard, uh, gave some hard times yesterday. This, is this label right here a line? No, no that is just this benchmark right here. 2053 is this mark right here, which would make this line right here 2000. If that line is 2000, and this one's 500, oh, I'm sorry, 1500. What are they going up by? They're going up by 100. Are these feet or meters? Meters. What could be an elevation there at A? 
They could be anything from 1,700 to 1,800. I agree with you guys who said 1,750. Yeah, thank you. If it was anything else, you as long as it's not 1,700, not 1,800, you're good too. So you could have estimated that at anything. Anybody have any questions on how or why? Okay, so again, 15, 16, that would make this line 1,017, 1,700, and this one 1,800. So this is anything in between. So then how far apart are A and that mark right there? Quiet day today. How many? No, that's how, not the distance. We want the distance, not the change in elevation. So distance uses the map scale. So take, they said from A to this mark, bring it down to my scale. It leaves me halfway through this black area. What's halfway between two and two and a half? Two and a quarter, which is 2.25 kilometers. And then they just asked for the gradient. So remember the gradient is the change divided by distance. We so far know the distance. We just did that, 2.25 kilometers. How do I find the change between those two points? Subtract. So we know for sure the elevation there, 2,053. We estimated A to be 1,750. If you picked a different answer, then your top number here will be slightly different, which is still correct. So now I do, and this is meters by the way. So 303 divided by 2.25 gives me, and it doesn't say, but you should round to the nearest 10. So if you had my number, 134.7. So we would go to the six, that's the tenths place, but we don't just, cut it off there, we have to decide, does it stay the same or round up? And this one does round up. And then our units this time are meters per kilometer. All right, and the last four here, the contour interval for this map, this time they're going up 20 meters. Ooh, what is the elevation of the highest contour line? 180. Then it asks a very similar but slightly different question. What is the highest possible elevation on this map? 199 meters. That should be added to our review sheet. Highest possible. How can we put into words how you guys got 199? One less than what would have been. The so one less than what would have been the next contour line. So in our example, the highest was 80. They were going up by 20. So the next line would have been 200. So you just subtract one from 200 and you got 199. And then what's the distance between A and B? Again, use scrap paper, mark off A and B, bring it down to the map scale. Mine was exactly 30 kilometers. And then they ask you to do the gradient between A and B. So we do gradient equals change divided by distance. How much do they change from A to B? A is 180, B is 120. How much do they change? That's a difference of 60, uh, 60 meters. We already found out that they're 30 kilometers apart. 60 divided by 30. Make sure you use your calculators because 
Sometimes people like to reverse these. This time the answer is nice and easy. Two meters per kilometer. Let me see if there was anything else. Let me pull up the test that I feel like you have to know. So you need to know what latitude and longitude lines look like. You need to know that altitude of Polaris equals your latitude. You need to know that again. You need to know that again. You need to know how to draw a profile. And again, another profile. You need to draw contour lines. You need to know longitude lines are 15 degrees apart. You need to know highest possible elevation, stream flow, Polaris, Polaris. Time zones, 15 degrees apart. If you go east, you get later in the day. If you go west, you get earlier in the day. So in case you guys don't know, I'm looking at the test right now and telling you the things you need to know. So I wanna make sure you know them. Again, we have direction of the stream flow. You need to calculate gradient. You need to be able to do contour intervals. Greatest possible elevation again. You need to know what the hydrosphere is. You need to be able to read the uh, chart on the front page of the reference table for hydrosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere. Do you guys know what the word abundant means? A lot or the most. Again, you need to be able to read the chart on the front page of the reference table. And then the last three questions you need to know, again, contour interval, gradient, and profiles. So there wasn't a single thing on this, rep, on this review sheet that wasn't on the test. And there's nothing on the test that isn't on here. Make sure you are comfortable with this review sheet for tomorrow's test. And that's all I have for you today. So you have no actual homework. I'm not going to make you do more practice. Please make sure you're ready for the test tomorrow. And then we will start chapter three, rocks and minerals on Friday.